Thank you so much for joining us for the meetup of the Assembly of Wanderers. I'm super excited to be here with you guys on today. So what we're going to do is we're going to be in the book of Haggai, which I'm super excited about because I've heard the stories over and over about Haggai and in studying Haggai, I had a few things that really hit me. So I hope you get out of Haggai what I got out of Haggai. So we're going to spend a few weeks, probably a couple of months in the book of Haggai. Now in the book of Haggai, there are four messages and we're going to go through all four of those messages. But before we hit the first message, I want to um, put you in the mindset of the people of Jerusalem at this time. So in Haggai chapter one, verse one, it says in the second year of King Darius. So King Darius has been leading for two years on the first day of the sixth month. So it's the first day of the sixth month, like just for example, like June 1st is the first day of the sixth month. The word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of she. Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of of Josedek, Jose, excuse me, Jehozadak, the high priest. Okay. So all this is going on, but I want you to I want to put you in the mindset of what is going on at this time. Because my teacher taught me that. If you put it, if you let people understand what's going on at this time, it's easier for them to understand what's going on. So at this time, they have just been released from 50 years of captivity. The Babylonians took them into captivity, 70 years of captivity. The Babylonians had them in captivity. The King Xerxes, uh, King Xerxes, King Xerxes, has released them back into their home. So those who choose to go, choose to go, because he, King Xerxes and his army took over the, Bab the Babylonians. And so he released them. So during this time, there's a lot going on. So I want to give you a, a more, uh, I want to give you a present day example. A storm has hit your town and you have had to leave because you you can no longer be there time has passed the storm has gone time has passed you've been allowed back into your city you're walking back into your city and there's rubble everywhere so this is what this is what has happened they have been cap they have been in captivity the their captors have been have been taken over and those and those who have captivated them have released them back to their home. So they're walking back into Jerusalem. And here's what's going on. Again, it's 70 years after Babylonian capture. So how long have you been under the capture of the issues in your life? Like, think about that for a second, because we're talking about the people of Jerusalem, but I also want you to understand this is relatable to you. How long have you been under capture of the issues in your life? They were under the capture of, Bab of the Babylonians and now they've been released. Think about it, 70 years in captivity. How long have you been present in something somewhere or someone else's expectations? The people of Jerusalem were were captured and they were under the captivity of the Babylonians something, the Babylonians somewhere, and the Babylonians themselves. So they were under they were under the the captivity of the Babylonians. So whatever the Babylonians said went, they had to stay where the Babylonians told them to stay. They were separated. They and so you're in the same position. And how long have you been away from home? Whatever home is to you. The Babylonians, uh, the, the, the people of Jerusalem have been away from Jerusalem for, for 70 years. How long have you been away from what you considered home? Generations have been born away from home. The, the culture has had to change because they've been away from home. They don't know what's going on in their homeland. The last time they left, things were in rubble because there was a war going on. They were captured. They didn't freely leave. They were captured. So everything in their home, they left. 
They love clothes. They love jewels. They love family, family heirlooms, homes that they have built up. The temple has been destroyed. They have, they have been gone away. So how, how long have you been gone away from what you consider home? So this is, this is what the people of Jerusalem are dealing with right now. They're, they've come back home, but, the, but all this time their mindset has been shifted because they've spent 70 years. You know how many generations can be born in 70 years? Quite, there's like, you can get three generations in 70 years. So imagine your home being destroyed. You're having to leave and you have children and your children have children. So everything that you have learned, you've had to pass pass on but you had to do it in a certain way where you couldn't fully give all of your traditions all of your learnings all of your this is what the people of jerusalem are dealing with so as we go into haggai i need you to understand the mindset of the people of jerusalem while they're going back home because this is the same mindset that you have when you go back home you've been gone too long a lot has changed I'm from the island of Galveston. After a, after a major storm hit us and I came back home, things were different. Things were missing. Things that used to be pillars in our community are now gone. From buildings to, to certain types of foods because the, the restaurants didn't come back to certain types of locations because they just didn't build it back up after it was destroyed. This is what they're walking into. And then not only that, you got used to being in a foreign place. So you got used to foreign rules, foreign languages, foreign traditions. And now you're coming back home and you have to, uh, now you have to adapt to home again because things have changed. It's not the same it was when you left. And it's, five it's seven decades seven a lot can happen in 70 years seven decades and now you're back on your homeland you're back to where your roots are and you're sitting here and you're looking at all of this and like what are we gonna do we have we, it, we're back home and now we get to build back up but where do we start because things are not the same things have changed and not only that, the people who captured you have been conquered. You're released to go back home. And like I said before, what you left, everything was in shambles. Everything was in rubble. Imagine, okay, I don't know if, I don't, I, not, I, I'm going to speak for myself because not everybody do this. You're getting ready to go on vacation. Or you're getting ready to travel. Your house is clean and everything. But then you're like, man, I got to find this one thing. You just start pulling stuff out. Because it's like last minute, you only have like a couple hours before you head out. So you start pulling stuff out because you forgot something. And instead of straightening that up before you leave, it's left just how you left it. And you go and you're gone for like two weeks. And sometimes you need a vacation from your vacation because you're worn out from your vacation. So when you come home, you come back to the rubble you left. And now you're looking at it distraught because you're like, I just want to rest right now. But you can't rest because everything's still in shambles. Everything, there's still rubble everywhere. That's what they had to come back to. When they left, everything was in rubble. Everything was in, in shambles. So now they have to figure out what to, what to do about that. And then their temple, your home, their temple is in shambles. What, what was once great is now diminished to a rubble. And you have to go home to that. You have to go home to what was once great is now diminished. Like I was saying earlier... When her, when a hurricane hit our island, what was once great is now in rubble. We had, we had to rebuild from that. And while we have rebuilt amazingly, there are still some things that are still missing. Things that have been rebuilt haven't, even though they've been rebuilt, they are not the same. They don't carry that same essence for us because we've been here. There are certain places on the island that I grew up seeing for the last 30 years that are like gone. 
So it feels weird looking at those places. And then the temple, the temple was destroyed. That's the same as you. Your wherever home is to you, you're going back to your home has your temple, your home has your place of worship. And for the for the people of Jerusalem, the temple is where the blessings came from. The temple was where God's God's greatest presence was. The temple was where sins were forgiven. And it is destroyed. So now their beacon of hope, their life, where everything takes place from them, where everything flows from them is not there either. So not only are they coming home to the rubble of their city, but they're coming home to the rubble of their temple. And everything needs to be rebuilt. So at this point in time, when we're talking about Haggai, this is what we are looking at. We're looking, we're we're walking into a city. We're going back home to the city where everything is in rubble. So think about their mindsets. Think about where their mind is. They're they're excited to be going home, but at the same time, it's like, oh my goodness. We're happy to be home, but where do we begin? What do we do? So this is the state of the Jewish people in the book of Haggai at this time. They are in the rebuilding stage after 70 years of captivity. So next week, we're going to dig into the first chapter of Haggai and we're going to go into detail with the first message of Haggai and the first message in Haggai. The first message of Haggai is rebuild the temple for the glory of God. So I will see you guys next week for the first message as we dig into Haggai and everything that Haggai has to offer us. And I hope that it hits you like it hits me. And let's go for this change that we're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me at the Assembly of Wanderers. I look forward to seeing you next week.